Hey, 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 what's up everybody? It's George here and we're back with another video. Now today's video is video number eight in the Goblin 500 electronic setup series. In video number seven, we completed going through the potentiometers and started working on the parameters menu. We stopped on parameter A, which is the cyclic servo centering, and now we're ready to move on with parameter B or the control behavior. But before we do, let's take a quick look at my setup. First, I have the manual open to the right page, and I have a pen in case I need to take any notes. I have my Spectrum DX8 and the Goblin 500, and that's all we're going to be needing. So let's uh, not waste any time. Let's put the camera on the tripod and move on with the parameters menu. Okay, we're ready to move on with the parameters menu. I've already entered the parameters menu, as you can tell, by the flashing LED. And it's on parameter A, which is where we left off. I'll move to parameter B by pressing the setup button once. Now we're on parameter B. Parameter B is the control behavior parameter. This parameter changes the helicopter's response and feel, just like the dual rates and expo do on your radio, and it really does have the greatest impact on your helicopter's performance. There's four preset control behaviors that you can choose from, normal, sport, pro, and extreme, and each provide an increasing level of response. The fifth selection is the transmitter selection, which allows you to control the helicopter's behavior with your radio's dual rates and expo settings. If you do use one of the preset control behaviors, make sure that you disable all of the dual rate and expo settings on your radio. Finally, there's one more, which is a user-defined selection, where you can custom set the control behavior using a, a link cable and the software. To change this parameter, like all the other parameters, we simply use the rudder stick to cycle through all of the available options. For the first flight, I'm going to be leaving this set on Sport, which is a default setting, and most likely changing it to Transmitter later on down the road. To save the setting, I'm going to press the Setup button one time to get to the next parameter. Okay, now we're on parameter C. Parameter C is the swash plate pitching up compensation parameter. This parameter affects the pitching behavior of your heli while you're in forward flight and applying collective pitch changes. If while you're in forward flight and applying collective pitch changes, it causes the nose of your helicopter to pitch up and down, sometimes called porpoising, you'll need to change this parameter. Increase or decrease the parameter to eliminate the pitching behavior. If you have it set too high, you're going to find that your heli is going to feel sluggish, and if you have it set too low, it will definitely exhibit porpoising behavior. The goal is to have it as low as possible without any unwanted pitching. To change the parameter, like all the other parameters, we use our rudder stick to cycle through the available options. The default is medium, which is where I'm going to be leaving this setting unless I determine that it needs to be changed while I'm at the field. Note that if none of these settings eliminate the unwanted pitching, you may have to change to faster or stronger servos, or if you're not using flyballers blades, change to flyballers blades. To save the setting, I'm going to press the setup button once to move on to the next parameter. Okay, we're on parameter D, and parameter D is the tail heading lock gain parameter. This parameter determines how consistently the tail of the heli will maintain rotation rate in response to rudder input. The objective is, is to have this parameter as low as possible and still maintain an acceptable rotation rate. You really should make sure that you have all of your gain settings properly set up in your radio before making any changes to this parameter. Like all other parameters, to change this parameter we use the rudder stick to cycle through the available options. Setting this parameter too high is going to result in difficulty controlling fast tail direction changes or the tail moving in a hover or bouncing after stopping a rotation. Setting this parameter too low is going to result in inconsistent pirouettes in forward flight or in crosswinds. The default is medium, which is where I'm going to be leaving it unless I determine it needs to be changed while I'm at the field. To save this setting, I'll press the setup button once to move on to the next parameter. Okay, now we're on to parameter E. Parameter E is the stick deadband setting. This parameter adjusts the range around the center of your stick 
where the AR7200BX will not react to input. This is a setting that you're going to need to adjust to your own individual preference. To change this parameter, you use your rudder stick to cycle through the available options. Setting this parameter too high will result in a large range of stick movement where you have no control and it may cause difficulty maintaining a steady hover. Setting this parameter too low is going to result in a helicopter tipping on takeoff and being difficult to control in general. The default is red flashing, which is where I'll be leaving this setting unless I determine it needs to be changed while at the field. To save this setting, I'll press the setup button once to move on to the next parameter. Okay, this looks like a good place to take a break. We've made real good progress working our way through the parameters menu of the AR7200. Look for video number 9 of the Goblin 500 electronic setup series coming soon where we continue on with the parameters menu of the AR7200. Thanks for watching and as always, happy flying friends!